Right, welcome to this video on short-term decision-making in F5, uh, which covers quite a lot of different topics, as you can see. So if we look at the material here, we can see uh, that questions in this area might include whether or not to accept or reject um, uh, certain possibilities, so decisions on that. It might look at the minimum price uh, that we need to charge on a contract to make it viable. It might be looking at whether or not to uh, keep a certain division or department uh, open or to close it down. It might be to decide when to implement uh, a certain project. It might be looking more closely at how much we need to produce to break even. Uh, what to do if we've got limited resources like labour hours or kilograms of material. Uh, whether to make the items in-house or to buy them in and outsource production and whether to process items further uh, within a process, so either sell them in a, a slightly more uh, raw state, or whether to refine them, spend some more money, but then maybe get more money by selling them uh, in a more ref refined state. So one of the most important things we need to be able to deal with is the idea of relevant costs. Uh, so when we make a decision, only certain costs are going to be relevant. This is not the same as working out the profit on a project. If we worked out the profit, we'd include all the costs we'd incurred, the research and development we'd spent, uh, and so on, design costs. Whereas when we make a decision on whether to go ahead with a project, anything that we've already spent on that project has already happened and therefore won't be a difference between going ahead with a project or deciding to abandon it. So we don't consider that in the decision as to whether to go ahead or not. So to summarise, relevant costs need to be future, they need to be in the future, so we're not going to take account of any costs which have already been incurred, which technically we call sunk costs, because they won't change whichever decision, whichever way we go with our decision. Just in passing, that would also include costs we haven't actually paid for yet, but we can't get out of. So if we had spent money on development um, or incurred costs on development, but we hadn't paid a consultant's invoice yet, that is still a sunk cost because whatever we do, go ahead with it or don't go ahead with it, we cannot avoid paying that money. So it's not a difference between the two possibilities. So they've got to be future. They've also got to be extra. So if we have a workforce which is uh, being paid uh, and at the moment doesn't have enough work to do but we're still paying them, then if we find them some work to do, the extra cost to the company as a whole is nil. There's no extra cash going out from the company. And we are looking at the company as a whole, not just this tiny little area which involves the project. We're looking at the company cash flows as a whole. Whereas if we have to employ people uh, and they have to do it in their uh, normally when they would be going home, they have to be paid overtime, then it would be a rate at which we pay the overtime, which is the extra cash flow expense for the company. And they also have to be cash, which comes back to this idea uh, about the company as a whole to some extent. So suppose we have a lot of fixed overheads in the company, very likely, and we absorb those fixed overheads. It may well be that we absorb at a rate of 25% uh, of labour costs or something like that. In a question, they might well say, for this project, we absorb overheads at 25% of labour costs. Here are the labour costs. We do not include the 25% notional amount for overheads because for the company as a whole we're not necessarily spending any more on the overhead costs. So that means that we need to look very closely in the question of whether there are extra costs. It states explicitly there are additional fixed overheads being incurred because of this project. That would be, definitely would be, extra costs for the company, extra cash costs, but we wouldn't include anything to do with absorbed overheads. It also means we exclude depreciation as well, because depreciation is spreading a cash cost. We paid a million dollars for it at the start, and we got back half a million dollars at the end. We think we're going to for scrap value or resale value. So we spread the difference on saying, I'll 
do one more of that product, one more of that product, and what we don't want to be doing is assuming that the fixed costs are increasing, it's only the 